what I wanted to cover today was a little bit on wiring. I've got to figure out for my own case. So I took the uh, 135 watt SunTech panels that I just got and look at the specifications to kind of give me some starting points for sizing of that cable. So a couple of the key numbers that you have to look at is this maximum power voltage, which is the ideal voltage that the panel would operate at, which in this panel's case is about 17.4 volts. And then at that voltage, what's the maximum current that it should put out? In this case, it's 7.76 amps. So now we want to take these two numbers and put it into a wire size calculator to see uh, what it tells us for the wire size that we'll need to have. Now there's a number of online calculators you can use for voltage drop. I prefer to download a spreadsheet and I found one out there from a site called oynot.com. It's O-Y-N-O-T dot com. You can download it. It's a free spreadsheet that just imports into Excel and it gives you a starting point for doing some of this uh, voltage drop calculations. So <clears throat> as we know the solar panel is going to you know generate some power. So in these blue blocks here you're allowed to enter some of the basics about your particular system. So in my case I'm going to take that 17.4 from the array maximum power point voltage. I'm going to enter the uh, maximum power current of 7.76 in here and <clears throat> give it give it a name so I call the panel the fearless 135. Now the all uh, solar panel commercial solar panels come off with the 10 gauge wire and to start with I'll just assume I'm going to go 100 feet with it. Now this 100 feet is actually uh, 100 feet of wire so it's 50 feet one way 50 feet back so you're really only going 50 feet away and if I just use make an assumption I'm going to use 10 gauge wire from the panel to my grid tie inverter which would be 50 feet away this is telling me that with this particular panel I'm going to lose 4.54 percent of my voltage is going to drop over that distance basically meaning it's not going to be uh, at, at the grid tie inverter. There's going to be losses in the wiring itself. Well the solar panel industry their requirement for a certified system is no more than 3 percent voltage drop. Now, another thing you can also change in here is you can change the temperature. So let's here's a 25 degrees with 77F. Let's just see what happens at 35 just to see <clears throat> how that affects and you can see it affects the voltage drop goes even higher. So if you live in a, a hot temperature zone you can really be affected by that. If I go down to 0 C which is freezing temperature uh, the voltage drop improves a little bit but it's still above that 3 percent minimum. So let me get back to 25 is kind of the nominal. Now what <clears throat> I can do here is I can sit here and play around and put, okay, what would happen if I use 12 gauge wire? It would get even worse because that's a smaller gauge wire. I can uh, drop it down to 8. And that looks like 8 will get me under this 2 point, or under 3% for the voltage drop. Probably the quickest way to do it would be just to <coughs> copy the title and this just put in uh, a bunch of different gauges here all the way down to two we'll stick for a hundred feet we'll put the panel amps all the way down and it tells us okay here's our voltage drops we're gonna get based on the different gauges and the different distances so if I wanted to go 50 feet away, which would be 100 feet, this is telling me to stay under that uh, 3%. I've got to be uh, using 8 gauge wire. Now let's say, well, maybe I get away with, uh, with 80 feet. <clears throat> so I'll put that 80 feet in there 
which would be 40 feet away, use 8 gauge wire, or see if I get up to 10 gauge wire. Well, I still can't do that. I'm still over 3% on the 10 gauge. Let's try uh, 70 feet. <clears throat> I'm still not there. So I'm going to have to go probably to 65 feet if I wanted to stick <coughs> stick with using 10 gauge wire I can finally get under the 3% voltage drop for that distance. But obviously my distance is getting short. So anyway that gives you an idea how you can use this uh, to be able to predict what your voltage drop is going to be based on the wire gauge that you're going to use and based on the, the panel uh, maximum power point voltage and maximum power point current for it. So let's look at another way to use it. Okay, so let's uh, say, all right, I know I got three panels I'm going to want to put up, but instead of going a, going 100 feet for each of them all the way back to different grid tie inverters, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to only go, let's say, 10 feet to a combiner box so that every 20 feet of wire for each. And that tells me that I'm going to have less than a 1% voltage drop just going from the panel to a combiner box. Now, let's say well, I have this combiner box within 10 feet of the panels. Now I want to run from that combiner box back to my grid tie inverter. Okay, so that brings us down to here. So the array uh, to the combiner box is shown here. We've only dropped our 1%, but now our current has jumped up to 23 amps. So now I'm going to have to deal with carrying 23 amps from this combiner box to either a charge controller or a grid tie inverter. In this case, I'll just assume the grid tie inverter case. <clears throat> well, if I assume using just two gauge wire, and that distance from the from the combiner box to the grid tie inverter is 100 feet of wire. That's 50 feet away. You can see that that allows us to uh, that loss right there is 2.1 percent. Add to the 0.9 says we're still over 3 percent total to get to the grid tie inverter. So I would really have to drop down to uh, about a one gauge wire to get the total of these two to be under three. Now you can carry this down further if you're running from a instead of a grid tie inverter at this level you're going to a, a charge controller then through a, a breaker to get to your batteries then from the breaker to the battery itself having even more uh, heavier gauge wire you can even put in the the uh, <coughs> 01 and 00 double aught, triple aught wires to get the total um, losses down to as low as you can afford to put it. So this tool itself allows you to uh, play around with the wire gauges, the distances, and to be able to have your total drop be as low as you want to have it. Now obviously for a PV system, um, you know, your target is you know, 3% to have a system that's going to be commissioned, but uh, you obviously can make a decision on your own based on the costs of uh, how you want to divide this up. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that. Uh, these tools are pretty easy to use, and it'll help you make decisions on whether you want to run wires from each panel back to a set of grid ties or one grid tie, or Combine, have combiner boxes along the way. Talk to you later.